It is the single most frequently asked question that we get amongst um, our board member users. And it is, you know, what should we be doing about AI? What should we be doing about AI governance? You cannot deliver the maximum results for your shareholders without considering all of the other stakeholders that are in your constituency. Um, I think your board should be composed of people who either look like the composition of your employee base or the composition of your customers. AI to cyber to board governance. And um, uh, no, I enjoyed the dialogue. Thought it was very thorough. Um, thanks so mm -hmm. much, Boris. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Brian Stafford. Brian is the president and CEO of Diligent, which is the GRC SaaS company providing solutions across governance, risk, and compliance for more than uh, 1 million users and 700K board members. Both from his, his experience uh, leading a GRC company and as a CEO himself, Brian understands the mounting pressure executives uh, and boards face in today's shifting uh, regulation and social media heavy landscape. So Brian, welcome to our Risk Management Show podcast today. Thank you for having me, Boris. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Me, 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 we are excited as well. So we spoke with, with some of your colleagues uh, before. Uh, for example, as we spoke with Liam Healy uh, a few hundred episodes before uh, about ESG and, uh, and governance and evolution of legal uh, operations in cyber. But today I will, I will, we will speak with you on the topic of um, inside governance, navigating boardroom uh, and the hot topics. Uh, so I think we will have some uh, good stuff. Uh, but before that, uh, could you please uh, share your story about uh, your career path, uh, what brought you to where you are right now and what, what you guys are diligent up to this day? Sure. Uh, thanks, Boris. Um, so I'll do my career arc. Uh, in a very quick snippet, um, after university, I started a company. Um, company grew rapidly, um, but it happened around the time period of the dot-com boom and crash. And so as the dot-com crashed, so did my startup. Um, I then went back to graduate school, and then I spent a decade of my time at McKinsey & Company, uh, the management consulting firm, because my startup wasn't uh, as successful as I aspired it to be. Uh, I figured I'd learn how big companies were successful. And after doing that, being at McKinsey and becoming a partner there um, and being there for a little over 10 years, I had the unique opportunity to join Diligent and become Diligent's um, CEO. Uh, and Diligent at the time um, was a fast growing company focused on serving the board. And I thought that was a very interesting and um, unique angle for SaaS products, software applications. And I thought that having that unique view into the boardroom of some of the world's largest companies was um, was a great opportunity to, um, to run and drive growth in a software company. And over the course of the last um, nine years that I've been with Diligent, um, the conversation started in with governance and the conversation with boards evolved um, you know, pretty materially around helping to manage risk, helping organizations be in compliance, and staying ahead of uh, future risk factors um, like ESG, climate risk, talent, other kind of risks that exist. And so today we're, you know, the largest governance risk and compliance company based upon revenue um, um, around the world. Uh, we have the, um, we're fortunate enough to work with about 25,000 clients on helping them out on governance, risk, and compliance. And as you mentioned, um, we have the unique privilege of working with about 700,000 board members, CEOs, CFOs, um, general counsels, uh, and uh, excited to share um, their perspectives on risk with all of you. Fantastic. Yeah, I think you implemented your first vision of your uh, first startup in your diligent uh, career, right? So I think you are do, doing the uh, kind of uh, growth uh, because before you said you are kind of a, a major uh, GRC uh, company, but I think before five years ago, I didn't hear about diligent. Just uh, last uh, few years, I just to hear more and more about diligent in the in the market. This is a great it's been, job. It's been a great growth story. 
All right. So, uh, Brian, let's discuss uh, some of the most uh, pressing uh, challenges uh, facing board directors today and uh, how uh, you guys are diligent addressing them. Yeah, I think for, for board members today and how things have evolved over the course of the last, you know, the time period that I've been with diligent, it's um, board members would say that so much more of their time today is focused on risk management oversight of an organ as as board members your role is oversight of an organization and as one of um uh one of my favorite board members who sat on 30 plus boards in her career said you know brian governance has become our, our role in oversight has become an exercise in risk management and what board members will tell you today versus maybe you know five years ago was they spend just as much amount of time today on helping a company or thinking through and working with and providing oversight on performance of an organization. But they'd say now versus five years ago, they spend so much more time on risk. And so it is more than double the amount of time that they spend in working with the companies they sit on the board of because risk management has become so much more palpable and it's become palpable for many reasons. We've lived through the pandemic and a bunch of new and emerging risks that maybe were not as high on the radar um, as they as they um, uh, then as they are now. New risks, like we talked about ESG or climate, you know, even since then, um, issues of talent, issues of diversity, all these other issues that 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 fall on the radar, and um, because of an increase in regulation, because of an increase in shareholder pressure, because of an increase in you know the rule or what employees expect of their organizations. There's all these other stakeholders that have caused these broader set of risks to be um, uh, from maybe the 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 second page in your to do list to now the first page of the to do list of every board member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good uh, good definition. <laughs> so, uh, and Brian, what, uh, with the rapid uh, play, place of technology and ad advice advancement, how can boards ensure they stay ahead of uh, of the curve in terms of uh, governance uh, and risk management? Yeah, so that's how we've tried to evolve as a as a software company to help to provide a set of tools to allow um, CEOs, CFOs, general counsels, and board members to have all the information they can have in front of them, both the information that exists within a company that's delivered through our platform, but also information that exists externally from our external partners, data providers, vendors, news, insight, research papers. And so um, the reality is boards who used to actually meet four times a year, you know, in conference rooms and now find themselves, um, it's hard to find a board member on a Fortune 1000 company who wouldn't say that they're dealing with um, some board related issue or company related issue at least every month on the phone, reading something, being informed, et cetera. And so what once was a cushy four times a year job has become a, you know, a full contact sport with new tools, technologies, and platforms like Diligent to help you stay in touch and manage things in between board meetings. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear also from uh, uh, from the press that the board uh, becoming uh, uh, being a board member now is uh, much more risky than uh, uh, some times ago because there are a lot of uh, pressure and uh, potential uh, uh, litigation for for risk managers. For, I, I think for, you're. For, you're, you're exactly right. And so, yes, um, with incoming risk, whether it's lawsuits, whether it's the press attacking, whether it is um, uh, uh, like watchdog groups or, or um, you know, different countries, the EU or whatever, people go after and find the companies. They mention the board member's name in the press. And in many cases with, you know, impending regulation around cyber in the US, have the ability to go after officers and board members. And so I would not be surprised if the continued trend um, if the trend in increased pressure on boards um, persists, you will have board members who say, I don't know if it's worth it, or I'm going to reduce the number of boards that I sit on um, just because there's um, because of an increasing risk environment and lit litigation environment that exists out there um, um, for, uh, for board members. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, diversity, diversity and inclusion uh, have become uh, increasingly important uh, for in uh, boardrooms. 
So how can uh, they effectively promote the diversity and inclusion while maintaining good uh, governance practices? Because we see that uh, some there are some quotes uh, for females, some quotes for different uh, um, nationalities. But uh, what is a, a kind of trend to 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 balance this and uh, uh, performance? Uh, it's a great point. Um, I'll start out with my personal perspective. Um, I think from a board perspective, I think boards should have a diverse member, a diverse um, set of people on the boards to help that company navigate whatever challenge they have. And that, by that, I mean, um, I think your board should be composed of people who either look like the composition of your employee base or the composition of your customers. And go back to the composition of your customers. If you as an organization have an opportunity and think there's a um, there's a big opportunity to grow in South America, then you should probably have someone from South America on your board. <laughs> if you think there's an opportunity to appeal to um, uh, to the women demographic as you expand, then you should absolutely have people who follow that same um, dynamic on on your on your board. And so, I ultimately think about a board as a more strategic way to make sure that they're providing you a broad set of knowledge or contacts to help make sure they can inform the management team and the CEO and help to make sure you stay ahead of things. Now, I think you can find those different perspectives and opinions in, you know, across um, um, across men, women, et cetera, across the business, across people who had backgrounds as CEOs, CFOs, chief information security officers. So I think the, I think to expand the set of people and capabilities on the board, I think you do have to look at broader set of profiles. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. So, um, uh, because uh, let's discuss about cybersecurity because uh, these threats are kind of a major concern uh, for organization. So, uh, is there any uh, tips for boards uh, how to effectively oversee cybersecurity uh, risk and ensure adequate protection uh, for for their companies? Yeah, I, I mean, Boris, it, it is. It's interesting. Cybersecurity is. We run a survey of directors every year talk about what are the top issues that directors face. And cybersecurity for the last five or six years has always been in the top three. Sometimes it moves around, but it is always in the top three. Um, and I think it's back near the top or at the top of our most recent What Directors Think survey. Um, now, I think it is one of the areas that, that board members um, uh, struggle the most to have the best perspective on and manage. I think many board members are less cyber aware um, and some boards have less technology savvy board members. And so um, we would say that you need to up the bar for knowledge on your board, at the very least technology, <laughs> um, and hopefully with some background in overseeing cybersecurity, that's an important baseline. Um, second, um, in addition to that, or if you can find that, there are many cybersecurity certification programs to make sure that you can up the board's level of, of visibility of issues around cyber in the board. We offer one at Diligent that's fantastic. It's a certification program. Um, and then lastly, um, when I go around and I ask general counsels um, and say, how, how, how good do you think the quality of discussion is <laughs> or quality of materials are for discussing cyber risk inside the board, uh, and I'll ask them on a scale of one to five. And I often hear the answer is three. <laughs> so kind of a middle of the road. And when you push people, maybe it's closer to two. And so what we've tried to do a diligent is we've created a best practice framework for how to, how to do cybersecurity presentations and talk about cybersecurity for the CISO to the board to help make sure that we can up-level that dialogue and that conversation. Because the reality is when you ask most board members after the CISO comes in and presents, do you feel better or worse? After that presentation, the answer I get most often is, I don't know. And we'd love to make sure we can help to up-level that conversation, that discourse. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, kind of um, silver line uh, with, with regards to balance uh, between the uh, uh, interest of various st stake stakeholders uh, w while fulfilling their fiduciary duties for to shareholders? Uh, yeah, I think most companies try to get that right balance um, uh, to answer your question, Boris, between making sure that you're driving the right impact to shareholders. I think what um, uh, my point of view on it is if you have the longest time, if you have an appropriately long time horizon, you cannot deliver the maximum results for your shareholders 
without considering all of the other stakeholders that are in your constituency. So you can't deliver profitability over a 10-year period of time if you're not taking care of and addressing the thriving communities with which you operate. You can't drive profitability over a 10-year period of time if you're running afoul with regulators. And I think all those things, if you have the right long-term mindset, I think all those things align um, uh, to be able to, to um, have the right level of, of discourse and collaboration with your, with your stakeholders. I think where those things can come into conflict is if you're only focused on driving profit for this year or this quarter. Then you make trade-offs that maybe are short-term in nature and don't appropriately create the right environment to thrive long-term. And so if you can get the right alignment around that time horizon for success being long enough, I think all these things actually work together. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, looking towards the future, what trends or developments do you anticipate in terms of uh, uh, maybe AI regulations uh, can work for boards? I don't know, but what do you see as the trends in, in your space? Well, I'll give you two. Um, I, I will build on your point, Boris, around AI. It is the single most frequently asked question that we get amongst um, our board member users. And it is, you know, what should we be doing about AI? What should we be doing about AI governance? Like, how should we be able to think about it? AI is you know, phenomenal opportunity, but also carries threats along with it. I think it has a huge potential to transform the productivity of our organizations and, and transform in a positive way the world that we operate in. Um, but it also comes with risk around how is it deployed in the right way? Is there um, privacy? Is there piracy? Is it create new cyber attacks? And so all those things are, you know, have to be mitigated. So that's, that's I think AI is, I think you're spot on. The second broader trend is just all around risk and risk management. And I think most organizations with all the risks that we faced over the last few years, and like AI came up as a newer risk over the course of the last couple of years, how do you actually create the right framework to look at and manage all of these risks across your organization? And so we just see a need around organizations um, uh, looking for tools to help to better manage all those enterprise risks in an integrated way. I know personally, um, I have trouble sleeping at night. And part of the reason I have trouble sleeping at night is I'm worried I missed something. And whether it's to your point on the cyber side or other things. And so um, I think providing tools and AI can help out with that, but to make sure that organizations, board, CEOs, and CFOs, you know, have a view of what that risk landscape is so they can provide the right monitoring, mitigation of those potential risks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I would like uh, to ask you a personal point of view. What are the major misconceptions in the field of uh, board governance that you kind of strongly disagree with? Major misconceptions around board governance. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the most frequently, uh, and this comes from all set of people, is I'll be in a room and someone will say, well, I, I was at um, a security conference um, a little bit of time ago, and someone raised the question, said, well, what if the board doesn't approve the security budget? And I said, look, just to be really clear, the, the board doesn't the board doesn't make decisions on security budget per se. <laughs> Management presents, the CEO presents what he or she believes should happen. And the board asks questions. And management decides what the plan forward is. Um, the board gets to decide whether that CEO stays CEO or not. <laughs> and that is the way governance ultimately ends up existing. But um, most boards would not consider themselves as making decisions. Um, uh, that is the job of management. They will ask questions, they will challenge, they will push, they will provide the right level of governance and oversight. But I think the question around what does what decisions does the board make? Primary decision the board makes is what to do with people like me, the CEO. Uh, and if uh, the board does not feel like the organization is heading in the right direction, that's how they make the change and that's how they, um, um, they impact things. So I think it's a question around management versus board and how decisions yeah. are made. Yeah, it's good because uh, some people uh, kind of uh, do, do, uh, don't do understand what does board, what does management and what does uh, CEO. So this is a good uh, answer. So, so all right, uh, Brian, uh, just to summarize uh, for, for someone who is listening to this episode would like to walk away with one or two major takeaways. What would it be? Uh, my major takeaway would be um, uh, the risk landscape is changing evol uh, and evolving rapidly. 
And organizations need to have the right tools and processes to make sure that they can create the right risk management framework from the practitioner to the C-suite to the board. Uh, ultimately, our view on a diligent is governance exists by creating that right framework and allowing the right flow of information to exist. So you can ask the right questions and management can move forward. Um, and the second thing I would say is, is um, you know, we do operate in a really evolving world of governance. And, you know, there are proactive tools, information, and contacts that can help um, you as leaders, but also your boards help to better manage all these concepts. All right. So uh, fantastic. This were all my questions, uh, Brian. And perhaps if I forgot uh, to ask you something that uh, you feel important for our audience, uh, please go ahead. Uh, no, I thought it was a great discussion. Um, really loved the dialogue and the back and forth. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of really interesting topics that you covered from AI to cyber to board governance. And um, uh, no, I enjoyed the dialogue. Thought it was very thorough. Um, thanks so mm -hmm. much for us. Yeah, you are you are welcome, Brian. And uh, I wish uh, we will have more people from uh, Diligent in our community. Uh, and uh, I hope we will uh, further cooperate with you guys. Uh, thank you again. Hello. I look forward to it. Thanks, Boris, and uh, I enjoyed the discussion. Thank you.